Hey folks, welcome back to this channel. Today I want to start a new journey with you to, to talk about how to build a Node.js server using Fastify. So if you don't know Fastify, Fastify is a web framework that allows you to build REST API, uh, GraphQL server and not only. Basically in 2024 there are a lot of people that continue to create a new project using Express. But there are a lot of problems in Express, for instance, in the security and in the performance. And if you start to work with Fastify, basically you can build the same stuff and using the pretty the same syntax, but in a secure way and in a fast in a faster way. So if you are interested on, on it, you are in the right place. So that now it's time to jump in the code and today we will start to see how we can create a project with Fastify and how to create our first, first route using Fastify, TypeScript and some Fastify plugin. So don't waste time and let's jump in it. To start work with Fastify, we have to install it in our project. So first of all, we have to use npm to install Fastify. I also recommend to install Fastify plugin and Fastify autoload to autoload some route automatically and we will see more about that in a moment. Then in this project, I also decide to use TypeScript. So I also install TypeScript TS6 for run the project locally and Pinopretty to see the log of the server in a pretty way and the types for node. So now it's time to jump in the entry point of the application. This is our entry point and uh, to create our Fastify instance we have to import Fastify from the Fastify package and in this case I create a run function to create the instance of our uh, server. Using the function Fastify you can create your your, your server. Basically then you have uh, the instance of your server, the app in this case, and uh, you can add your root. In this case, using app.get, you can create a get, a get method, and in this case, the response is an object with a property hello and the value word. As you can see, the, 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 in this case, the, the new route have two uh, parameters, the request and the, re the reply. So the request contains all the data related to the request, obviously, and the reply is the object that is used to return the result to the client. As you can see here, um, the, the, object, the, the response is returned using the return keyword. But you can also use another approach and using the reply, you can use the, the send method and pass the method through this um, through this method and the the result is the same basically i prefer to use the return the return um, the return syntax and uh, if uh, it's required in some in some scenario i also use the reply.send but basically the best solution for me is using the return directly and uh, another important stuff is that uh, if you have uh, an asynchronous function you must uh, add uh, the async and uh, Fastify automatically understand that this is a, an asynchronous response and handle the, the response as a promise, basically. Then, to uh, initialize our, our server, we have to uh, expose it uh, using a port and uh, an host. And uh, basically using the listen method, you can uh, run, uh, run your, uh, your server. And in this case, the server listen to the port 3000. And uh, I prefer to use the host as 0.0.0.0 uh, because if you work with uh, Docker, um, using localhost could create some uh, strange mistake. So if you use the, the, um, 
the 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 syntax, uh, it's better and you also uh, prevent problem in your application. And, and then you can uh, uh, catch if there is some error and log it uh, using the logger and then also exit from, uh, from the process. So now it's time to see the result in action. Okay, now we can type npm run dev in a terminal and in another terminal we can use a curl with http uh, localhost 3000 and as you can see our server responds to our uh, route and the, the body of the response is a lower as expected. Okay, but this is not the best way to uh, add the route in our application, Fastify application. So basically, what uh, Fastify allow you to do is to register some plug plugin. We will talk about the plugin in the future, but uh, what you have to uh, understand is that there is a register function that allow you to add the feature inside, inside of your Fastify plugin, inside of your Fastify server. So in this case, I create a build server, okay, to add all the features that I want in my Fastify instance. So inside of the build server, I will register other uh, and other stuff. In this case, I use uh, Fastify Autoload to load all the route that I already create for you. In this case, as you can see, using Autoload, uh, I can say to autoload some prop, uh, some option. In this case, the dir where the directory where uh, there are the route. Uh, I can pass also other option. In this case, the pre the prefix. In this case, my uh, my API are uh, has a prefix of uh, slash API. And also, I said to autoload to you to force the uh, AS module. So using yes, I use the path and you to uh, understand which where is the route uh, folder. But the result is this. Inside of my route folder, as you can see, I have another route, another folder called v1. And inside of this route, I have another, in this case, another, um, another folder called hello. And inside of this, uh, this, uh, this file, uh, in this folder, there is a file called index.tx uh, where I have I can register a plugin. The signature of a plugin is pretty simple. It's a function, okay, that uh, in the first parameter has the Fastify instance. This is the instance of your application, okay? And you can add your uh, route. In this case, I add the route get and uh, that return word. The important stuff of, uh, this, uh, of this approach is that uh, the, the the structure of your folder is the route the 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 path of your API. So in this case, under API slash v1 slash hello, I have my get uh, get request that return a word as a, a string. But for instance, I also create a slash, a slash API slash v1 slash post that return different, uh, different method in this case. So the delete, so as you can see, there is the possibility to create a delete. Okay. I can also use the, I can also use TypeScript and the benefit of TypeScript. So I can uh, use the generics. Uh, exposed by the delete method and uh, in the params I can say that the param contain uh, an object with uh, a post ID. The post ID is uh, the ID of the post that I want to delete for instance. In this case I can parse the post ID and then find in this uh, stupid uh, database that is uh, a, sim a simple file that contain a list of posts. Okay and uh, find uh, the post with this ID. If uh, the post doesn't exist, I can reply and set the status 
to 404 and then return an object in this case the status code is 404 an error not found and a message or i can uh, remove it from the from the from the list and return the object in the response the same is for the get for instance you can create a get by id in this case by post id and uh, return uh, the post uh, if the post exists uh, or return uh, the uh, not found uh, message the not found status or return the list of the post uh, for instance uh, or you can create a patch uh, that uh, accept uh, in the parameter the post id and in the content uh, a partial uh, a partial uh, post uh, and in this way you can um, you can uh, simple uh, detect if the post exists as return not found or update the, the the post update the list and then return the updated post and the same is for the post to create a, a new a new a, a new post and basically in this way you can create all the structure or the tree of your route in a simple way using the using your uh, directory folder in reality the structure of your folder is uh, the single source of truth of your api and um, in this way you have only to register the um, the directory of your route in your root of your server basically and also in this case we can see the result in action Okay, we can run again our server. And uh, I use also a simple uh, method called uh, app.printroute to show you all the structure of the API. So as you can see, there is API slash v1 with the hello and uh, hello as a cat and a head. And uh, the v1 has also a post uh, path. And uh, inside of the post, we have uh, the cat and uh, the, po uh, the post. And uh, we have also the, um, the path to retrieve or to delete or to patch a single post that have the uh, parameter uh, post ID basically. So now we can see the result using a simple postman. So I can open my postman and this is the get. So we can close this. The get is a pretty host with, uh, in this case, uh, HTTP, uh, HTTP localhost 3000 slash API with V1 post. And if I call it, I can receive the the response the status is uh, 200 uh, okay and uh, this is the list of the post the same is for the post id so in this case uh, i can call the get with the id of the post in this case the id one as you can see i can receive it if i try to ask for the 10 for instance the result is a uh, not found the status is 404 and uh, th this is the the result basically then uh, we can add a new post for instance i use title new blog post and content this is a super great content we can send again and as you can see the result is a 201 in this case created and uh, the entity uh, just um, created so the ID uh, three the title new blog post and the content this is a super great content and if i try to call again the get in this case there is uh, there are three uh, elements three posts then i can also uh, patch the 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 post just uh, just uh, created so we can send a patch using the slash v1 post slash three and we can pass the title change title uh, blog post and as you can see now i have uh, the i received the, the the new the updated post with the new title the same is if i try to ask for the post with ID3 as you can see the title is changed last but not least we can also delete so in this case we can delete the th uh, the, um, the post with the 
ID equals to three, we can call send. As you can see, we receive 200 because we deleted. We and if you change the result, if you if we try again to call the send, we will receive a not found in this case because the delete the the, the post doesn't exist. And that's it. As you can see, create a Fastify server and add route in your application is a really piece of cake in reality. So using the autoload, uh, the autoload plugin, you can decide where is the route, uh, the folder of your route. And uh, then after this uh, configuration, we, we, we have only to add the route that we need in our application. Pretty simple. Okay. This solution is uh, fantastic to create our structure of the, of, the, of the route, of the path, but we have a problem. We described our parameter, in this case, in the TypeScript, but in reality, there is no code in this application, in this moment, that validate the parameter. For instance, here I can pass a number or I can pass, I don't know, a wrong string and so on and so on and uh, uh, there is no code that uh, validate uh, the body or the parameter received from the client we will see uh, how we can validate uh, and serialize our request and response in the next video hey folks it's time to wrap up so today we learn how to build a Fastify server using TypeScript and how to add the router inside of it uh, using the autoload plugin. We learn how to create route based on the route folder structure. And uh, as, as uh, you already understood, uh, it's a really piece of cake to uh, create a new route and add a new feature inside of our Fastify server using this approach. So in the next video, we will learn how to serialize our response and how to validate the data from the request. Now it's time to close. I hope you enjoy this content and if you like it, please hit the like button below. And if you want to stay updated with my content, please subscribe to my channel. So until next time, happy coding and see you soon. Bye bye.